you're gonna open your the terminal window and let's zoom in a little bit here so you can see and in that terminal window I'm gonna write docker run and then I want to write Postgres so these are the three words that you need in order to spin up a Postgres in a uh, container and that will download the image you will need an internet connection to download the image for the first time I have the image already done right so it's gonna be faster than your uh, probably right so you can do that and it will run but before I want to do that I want actually since Postgres is a database right if you want to listen to a port right but Postgres listen by default in port 4 5 4 3 2 right and in order to listen to that port you need to actually expose that port to your host okay and in order to do that you will use the slash p for port okay and then i'm gonna expose the same exact port 5432 that's my host port and that's the container port Five. This is like kind of a mapping. So this means that hey, when you, when you spin up a Docker container, it will spin up on this port, right? Five, four, three, two, all the time, right? But what port do you want to map it in the uh, the host, which is my machine, which is my Mac in this case, right? And for fun, I am going to give this container a name. You don't have to. It's gonna assign it a random name, like Sleazy Joe, whatever. Right, but I'm gonna give it a really name, just like called PG. Okay, and let's hit enter. Let's see what happens. Ooh, and database is ready and to accept connections. How simple and cool is that, guys? Right, this is really cool. Right, in your case, it might take slightly more time. The reason is uh, probably it's gonna download the image, gonna do all that stuff. Obviously, we don't have a way to test that database, right? Uh, unless we write some code. But to do that, I'm going to spin up another Docker container that has PG admin. And if you're familiar with Postgres, PG admin is actually the administrator interface that uh, administer, if you will, the Postgres databases. And it's a web server, essentially. So it, again, listens to a port. And... Uh, to do that, it's going to be a, like a mini web server We're listening to a port. We'll have a web application that manages nicely, that manages your Postgres database. So let's go ahead and spin up a, da, 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 a Postgres, no, a PG Admin. Okay. Uh, PG Admin is managed by, I think, David Page, right? Uh, that's the official. That's the uh, that's the official repo that I found actually. And to do that again, Docker run. Only if I can spell Docker right. And since obviously we're gonna spin it on a port, PG admin. This is the knowledge, right? You have to know. PG admin runs on port eighty. That particular uh, image that we're gonna run it runs on port eighty. So I can map it to port eighty. Right, but I don't want to do that because port it is already in use here. I'm using it for Nginx, so I'm gonna port just literally any other port. Right, I'm gonna use five 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 five. Yeah, and after we do that, another requirement here is let's let's write the name of the container, PG Admin. Again, this this part is completely optional. But it's cool to have like so you can do Docker start PG Admin Docker stop pd admin okay it's, it's it's cool to have a name for your container otherwise you get a sleazy joe sleazy uh, arthur whatever uh, okay the name of the image is d page pg admin 4 okay that is almost we're almost there okay so we have docker run right we have the port 555 mapping to port 80 we have the name and we have the d page slash pg admin 4 what we need to do is actually the requirement is since it's a web server since it's a uh, it's actually an application so there is a credential default credential there are obviously you have to put this default credential as an environment variable and to do that you're going to use slash e 
not slash dash e as an environment variable and the environment variable in this case is literally pg admin underscore default underscore we are out of line underscore email okay and although it says email you don't have to have an email you're just like i'm gonna name it hussein that works right it's it's not really it doesn't have to be an email per se and then i'm gonna add another environment variable dash e you have to do that and then pg admin underscore default underscore password okay hopefully easy to remember my password is so secure it's called password okay and i think that is all we need and then just like that we are running on port 5555 mapping to port 80 and let's okay so now i have postgres running and i have pg admin running so how to test pg admin since it's a web application your browser is your friend right unfortunately you cannot hit the the postgres database directly from the browser right because it's, it's tcp so i'm gonna do hussein mac that's my machine name and then guess what it was five 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 and just like that we're gonna be prompted with the email and password which was the environment variable that we provided which was we tricked it just hussein and the infamous password and then login we have a blank slate of nothingness right we have the beautiful pg admin we don't have any servers so how can we connect to our if only we have a database that we can connect to oh we actually do sir we do where is it listening it's listening on port 5432 i can change that by the way right we're gonna show you in a, in a minute that's the beauty of this we're gonna spin up another database on another port but let's add the first one first i'm gonna name this my db1 okay uh let's go yeah my my pg db docker whatever you can call whatever you want this is just the name the host the host is jose mac that's the machine name right and the port is happen to be the same 5432 remember we mapped 5432 to 5432 and the default password is postgres and postgres okay and then you go ahead and you connect it and then you can do all sorts of cool things by default postgres postgres you can start creating a database right db I just created a database. Why not? You can create tables and all all sort of cool things. Let's create another instance, guys, before we end this video. Uh, so I'm gonna do Docker run uh, dash p five four three one. Really, mapping to five four three two, which is the port that is the database port right the postgres database port and i am going to name it pg2 the instance 2 and i am postgres i think that's it i think that's it that will spin up another database how simple is that guys if if you if you if you don't not use your containers you have to install it twice there is no way you can install well i'm lying you can actually install two postgres in the same machine we have to configure for different port but it's it's really really tedious right but this you can just stop a container start another container it's just so simple right so i'm gonna create another server uh, docker 2 uh, what's the host name same host name but the port is 5431 can i connect sir can i connect oh we are connected right it's a blank slate there is not a single there's one database right and the other one has two databases <laughs>